For a while, I've been wanting to make some European head coverings from the Middle Ages to cover my modern hair and give my looks an extra touch of authenticity. So I made a couple styles in this video, ranging from the 12th to the 15th, maybe early 16th century. And as usual, some helpful links, research and resources will be in my description box. In modern life, most of us wear our hair in pretty simple styles with maybe a few hats or scarves, but not much in the way of head coverings. Head coverings seem to largely have religious associations in our modern life. In medieval Europe, there was a religious aspect to women covering their hair. It was associated with modesty in early Christianity, and we still see similar head coverings in nuns today. However, it also had some fashion elements and some very practical purposes. And it's also important to remember that men often kept their head covered with caps and hats and scarves in day-to-day -day life in this period too. It was believed that keeping your head covered was good for your health, hence the use of things like nightcaps while sleeping. It was seen as a form of protection against illness that helped regulate your body temperature. In an era when people loved to bathe, as we can see by the number of bathhouses throughout Europe, it was still impractical to wash your hair every day. People would comb through their hair every day, and adult women would often braid their hair and pin it against their head. This helped keep their hair clean and out of the way when they engaged in work. Now, the concept of women working is often treated like some sort of modern oddity that came about in the 1960s. But the truth is that women have always worked, unless they were members of the upper class, in which case their male peers didn't really work either. In actuality, it's our concept of work that's changed. Our concept of work changed in the 20th century, and this coupled with the rise of the nuclear family, this idea of a husband, a wife, and their children living together without any other community or family members. The husband goes out to work at some sort of company, and the wife stayed home to care for the home and children. That's a relatively new idea that doesn't really reflect the lifestyle of many of our ancestors. Women have always worked, and not just difficult and often unpaid household labor. Textile work, not just on the familial level, but on a commercial scale, has almost always been the work of women, historically. In medieval Scandinavian communities, there's a lot of evidence of weaving and cloth making by women that was an important part of trade and could earn a good deal of money. As many people know, because it was popularized by some internet posts, the term spinster, often used to describe unmarried women, comes from the fact that many unmarried women would make their living by spinning wool and flax fibers to create yarn and thread. Skilled embroidery was in great demand by the upper classes in medieval Europe, and women could actually be apprentices and masters of the trade, even sponsoring their own apprentices once they reached the appropriate level. Other craft works were also open to women, and in many areas, widows were legally allowed to continue running a family business on their own after their husband's death. But of course, Women didn't just engage in skilled crafts, but also physical manual labor as well. Of course, in agricultural communities, while men were specifically tasked with activities like plowing, every hand would be called to assist during time-sensitive periods such as the harvest. Laundry has also always been a task performed by women. Even married women were often employed as washerwomen by wealthier members of the community in the era before washing machines. This was a very physical task, requiring a lot of strength and stamina. And it seemed to be an activity where having your hair get in your face would be quite annoying. So wearing some scarves, veils, caps, while some are a little bit more fashion oriented, even some of the ones I'm making in this video, having your hair covered really was practical. We didn't have elastics 
in the past. So it helped secure your hair, helped keep debris and dirt out of your hair, and also helped to absorb any excess oil that your hair might create or sweat while you're working. And as you can see in this video, the construction of these items is quite simple and very geometric. They also weren't very fabric heavy, so scraps left over from undergarments made of linen would be very easy for even poorer women to use to create a fashionable and modest head covering. And wealthier women could make them out of finer materials like silk to show their wealth. They could also be made out of wool for greater warmth, but wool was a more expensive fabric. While all of the narrow folded over hems that I did on these, or a rolled hem, would be done by hand in the Middle Ages, I did utilize my sewing machine, as you saw for some, using a narrow foot hem just to save my hands a little bit of fatigue. If you'd like to see where I got the patterns for this and some more information about the styles and also about women's work throughout history, I have some resources, as I mentioned, linked in the description. I hope you enjoy reading them, and I hope you enjoyed this short little video. And if you have the means, if you'd like to consider being a sponsor, I have a Patreon, and I'll link that in my description as well. Bye!